Welcome to this Personas Studio One Complete Beginner's Guide. And of course, a good Studio One tutorial starts at the start screen of Studio One. On the start screen, you can create a new project or create a new mastering project. You can do that with these two buttons. This is creating a song, so creating a song from scratch and create a new project is a mastering project. For now, we're going to stick to songs. On the left over here, you can see your most recent files. For now, I'm going to create a new song. In this screen, you can select a predefined template, which are not very useful, so we're not gonna use them. For now, we're going to create an empty song. So click on empty song and give the song a name. We can select our sample rate, our resolutions, our time base that can be or time or bars. A song length of five minutes is long enough for now and a project tempo of 130 BPM, but we can change this later, so don't worry about it. Click on OK. And now our empty project opens. For us to see actually something, I'm going to open a file. So click on file, then click on open, then select the file you want to open. In this case, it's in documents and in my studio one folder and then select the song file and click on open. Let me explain first the screen elements we see on the screen and then I'll dive into the specific topics later in the video. On the top of the screen, we can see the controls, the mouse controls, and we control the things that are happening over here. On the right side of the screen, you can find the browser and in your browser, you can find your virtual instruments, your VST instruments, your effect plugins, but also the predefined loops that come with Studio One and the files on your computer. On the bottom of the screen, we have the editor and the editor displays or MIDI notes or audio, but that depends on what you have selected in the timeline. And that is the part in the middle of the screen over here. When we select a notes part, a MIDI part, a virtual instrument part over here, then I will get the notes over here. But when I select an audio sample, I click on that and then I have the audio sample over here. We can remove this editor from the window by clicking on edit on the right bottom corner over here. Click on edit, then this item will gray out and it is gone. When I click on edit again, it's blue and then you will see that the editor is over here. We can do the same thing with the browser. We can click it away if it's in the way. And when I click it again, it is here again. We have also the mixer to control the volume of each individual track that you see over here. And you can show that mixer by clicking on mix. Then you will notice that the editor will disappear and then the edit button over here is grayed out. When we want to save our project, we can click on file and then click on save. When you want to save a song to a new location, you can say save as. The problem is with the option save as is that Studio One uses a folder structure that you need with that song file. And that folder structure you can see over here. You need all these directories, including that song file. And I can say now uh, test two, and then it will use this folder structure, but that is often not useful. So let's click on cancel and then let's click on save to new folder. Let's go back a folder and now I rename this to boop and I hit save. And you can see in the Windows Explorer that it created a new directory, including all the subdirectories we need to store this project. Let's click the mixer away and let's click the browser away. And now let's focus on the timeline over here. On the timeline, you place elements in time and you can do that in different layers. And those layers you can see over here. Those are called tracks. For example, I have the track chords option and that has an element chords over here. And that element plays at the same time with the melody wobble over here. I can place the playhead by clicking on the header of a song. And now that playhead will go to the beginning of my drop. On the bottom of the screen, we can see the transport controls. Now we are stopped, but when I click on play, then it will play the song. With this button, you can record and with this button, you can activate the loop. The loop is a function that you can place, for example, on this part of the song. Then I select a part of the song that I want to repeat over and over again. Now this is grayed out because the loop isn't activated, but when I click on this 
button you will see it will turn blue and it will turn blue over here and when it reaches this point it will go back over here you can find the tempo option and with the tempo you set the speed of your track now it is set to 128 bpm but when i want to change that i can double click on that and I can enter a new value, for example, 150 BPM. And now my song will be played quicker. I can zoom in and out of the timeline by using the controls at the bottom of the screen. I can zoom in this way and I can zoom out this way. I can do the same thing with the shortcut. I can use the letter W to zoom out and E to zoom in. When I want to enlarge these areas, I can just drag one of those tracks down and now it will be bigger. If I want to enlarge multiple of these tracks at the same time, I can hold shift and select multiple of these tracks. Now I can drag down and now you will see it automatically will resize all the tracks that I have selected. When I want to add a track, I click on the plus icon over here and then a dialog will appear. I can give the track a name, for example, riser. And now I have to specify which kind of track I want to add. Studio One knows two types of tracks, the audio track, and that is directly imported audio from a WAV file or an MP3 file, for example. The other track in Studio One is a MIDI track or also called an instrument track. With an instrument track, you can program notes into Studio One, but it depends on the synthesizer that you attach to that track, how it sounds. So different synthesizers can give different sounds on the same notes. In this case, I'm going to select an audio track and I click OK. And now an audio track is added over here. You can see the track type by looking at the icon over here. This is an audio track and this is a MIDI track or an instrument track. And you can see by looking at these sections over here that these are notes. And on an audio track, you can see the audio waveform of the sound sample. You can't combine audio tracks and MIDI tracks. When I want to drag this one over to a MIDI track, it will say, uh -uh, dude, that's not possible. But I have no problem to drag this sound sample over to another audio track. When I want to delete this track, I can right click on that track and click on remove track. When I want to delete a MIDI track, an instrument track, I also have to remove the instrument because instruments in Studio One are attached to the project and not directly to your track. Therefore, I right click on a track. I can say remove track, but then the instrument is still there and still eats up system resources, but does nothing. But when I select remove track and instrument, then the complete track and the instrument is removed. On top of our timeline are our mouse tools. And now only my mouse cursor is selected. With the mouse cursor, I can drag and drop things to left, right, and to other tracks if I want to. But I can also use the select tool. When I click on the select tool over here, then I can select things. And when I go back to the mouse tool, I can drag and drop this part. When you select this bracket thingy over here, then it will combine these tools. But it depends where on the clip you hover. When you hover over the bottom part, it will be the mouse tool, like we had over here. But when I use the upper part, then it will use the select tool. So the upper part, the lower part. The upper part, I can select things. With the lower part, I can drag and drop things. This is my primary mouse tool, but I also have a secondary mouse tool. When I click on this arrow thingy over here, then I can select a secondary mouse tool. I can select a split tool, the eraser tool, the paint tool, the mute tool, the bend tool, the listen tool. Those are the tools that are also over here. Let's select the eraser tool. Now I can activate that secondary mouse tool by holding control on Windows and clicking with the mouse. And you'll see that the eraser tool will erase stuff. With the split tool, you can split clips. I don't know why you want to use that because you already have the range tool. The eraser tool we already discussed. With the paint tool, you can paint things like notes, for example. With the mute tool, you mute clips. With the bend tool, don't worry about it for now. And with the listen tool, you can listen to clips. For example, when I click on this clip over here, it will start here. Over here, I have the quantize, time base and snap function. The quantize function determines where things are dropped on the timeline. Now quantize is set to one quarter. That means that it will go to the first quarter that it can find on the timeline. When I set this to one eighth, 
then you will see that this distance is much smaller. When I set it to 1 16th, it's even smaller than that. I can also set it to one whole bar and now it will drop here, it will drop here and it will drop here. The time base function is a visual thing. It determines how much you see. Now it's set to 1 8th. You don't see that, but when I zoom in, you will see that. When I set this to one quarter, you will see that this line will disappear. And now it's gone. This is now set to bars, but you can also set it to seconds or samples or frames. I can also set it to quantize. That means that it will automatically use the value that I set with quantize. And snapping over here determines where I snap on the grid. Now it's set to adaptive, so it will figure out for itself where you want to snap. But you can set it also to bar, to the quantize function, etc, etc, etc. The button over here determines if snapping is on or off. Now it's on, it's blue, and then you can see it sticks to the bars. When I switch this off, then you can see that it doesn't snap to the bars. This button over here determines if your cursor is always on the screen. When auto scroll is off, then my cursor will wander off the screen. But when I switch auto scroll on, then you will see it will follow the cursor. By the way, if you have a question about Studio One, let me know in the comments below. Let's talk about the browser for a minute. I'm in the file section over here and I have some sound samples over here. I can preview those sound samples by clicking on the play button over here. And I can click on these, but I can also use the arrow up or arrow down. When I want to use one of those samples, I can just drag and drop them to my timeline. And you can see there are only two tracks now present on the timeline, but when I release the mouse button, it will automatically create an audio track for me. And you can see that by that icon over here. Studio One, however, can do something really clever. Over here, I have a drum loop and I can use this drum loop. But as you can see over here, this drum loop is in 100 BPM. And I can preview my file over here. And when I have this option enabled, it will automatically adjust the tempo of my sample to the tempo of my project that I set over here. And when I drag and drop this sample to my timeline, then it will automatically adjust to the tempo of my project. If you don't want a sample to repeat when you preview it, you can switch this off by clicking on this icon over here. Now let's create a new MIDI track. So plus icon, instrument track, click OK. And now I've added a instrument track. But this track is empty. I can't do anything with it. Therefore, I have to create a MIDI region. And I can do that by double clicking on my timeline and then it will automatically create a MIDI region for me. And now I can program in notes. But as you will hear, those notes, you don't hear those notes. And this is because you didn't add an instrument to this MIDI track. So let's click on instruments in the browser and now let's search for a synthesizer. Over here I have Serum, Spire, those are paid synthesizers. So let's pick one that is coming with Studio One, for example, Mai Tai, and I can drag and drop this instrument to my timeline. Don't worry about this screen, just click on the X icon and now you will see when we go back on the timeline, it will automatically play these notes over here. But I will hear everything together. And that is a little bit annoying. What I can do is select S, that means solo, and you will see that it automatically added red M's to all the other tracks because the M stands for mute. I can also mute this track and then now this track is muted, the rest will play, this track won't. When I click on S, this track only will play and the rest won't. Let's go to effects and add an effect to this track. Let's click on effects and now add a compressor. You can find the compressor under personas. Let's go to compressor, drag and drop this compressor to the track that you want to compress. The compressor will automatically open. And now when I play this track, it will be compressed and you can see the compressor over here. Now let's talk a little bit about the editor. The editor is over here on the bottom side of the screen. Again, blue is editor enabled and 
gray is not. The editor is the lower part of the screen and you can see that a lot of these tools over here have the same functions as the tools over here. I can draw in notes, I can do that with a pencil and now I can draw a note. When I want to remove those notes, you can select them with the mouse cursor and hit delete on the keyboard, but it's also possible to drag them to other parts of the piano roll. We can do a lot with MIDI, but we can also do some things with audio and that you can find over here when you double click on one of the audio clips over here. Some useful things to know about audio, you can fade out by dragging this right corner to the left or you can fade in by dragging the left corner to the right. You can also adjust the volume of a clip by dragging this little square thingy down or up if you want to up the volume. There are two panels we haven't talked about and that is the inspector. Click on the eye icon over here and then you will see I will get a panel over here. This inspector has everything to do with the selected track over here. When I select another track you will see that this will change. For example when I change to this one you will see it will change over here. When I select this MIDI track you can see that the inserts that we use, those are the plugins, are for example the compressor that I used. Let's talk about the track list. Let's hide the inspector and click on this icon over here. Now it will show you the track list. This is a representation of all the tracks you have in your project. This project is really small, so there is not much use for this track list. But when you have 150 tracks, it can help you to keep the overview on your project. Also, you can hide tracks. For example, when I right click on a track, say hide track, then the track is removed from this view, but it is still visible in my track list. I can show it if I want to by clicking on this bullet icon over here and now it is present again. When I'm super happy with the composition that I created, I can export it to a WAV file or an MP3 file, for example. Therefore, click on Song, click on Export Mixdown and now I will get the export dialog. I can give the file a name, for example, my song and I can specify a range. Now the range is between a loop and that is this range over here. I can also select the format over here and then I can select for example an mp3 file. I click on mp3 file and I can click on OK. And now it will export my super duper song. You can find more Studio One tutorials in the playlist over here and if you like the content subscribe and click on the bell icon.